couch Dogs need the lesson Hey there, Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to another awesome guitar lesson right here on Lickin' Riff, in which I'll show you the one guitar chord shape no one ever bothered to teach you. And um, I know that this is a bombastic claim, but um, you'll see. It's a life-changing chord. And it has to do with the caged shape, with the caged method. Um, you have C, A, G, E, D and you're playing the C shape all over the neck. You're playing the A shape all over the neck. You're playing the E shape all over the neck. And some of you play the D shape all over the neck as well. But what about the G shape? Okay, the G shape is really uncomfortable. You're not playing the G shape all over the neck. Now, in some variations, you're playing the high notes of the G shape. Um, for example, if you want to play a D chord, then you'll play the 777 on strengths 2, 3, and 4, okay, with the high 10, okay? And this is the high notes of the G shape chord, but there's another G shape chord, which you unfortunately almost always encounter in classical music and nowhere else, and it's this Okay, it's the A shape, okay, with the bass three frets apart on the lower bass string. Okay, meaning that if you're playing A, okay, instead of playing the open fifth string, you can play five on the sixth string. And that's the chord shape. If you're playing D, you can play this. Okay, I'll show you its practical applications in a moment. Okay, but this is really a simple and convenient chord shape as opposed to this chord shape, the A chord shape, in which you have to cram three fingers into one fret. And when you have B flat, for example, or if you're on the high fret, okay, this can become a little bit uncomfortable. So what most people do is they double bar. Okay, but then you have to kind of like, you know, bend your finger unnaturally to have this high note, okay? When all you could do instead was play the G shape with the bass three frets higher on the sixth string, okay? So for example, if I have C sharp, okay? Instead of barring four and putting an A shape on six, I can bar six and put the, uh, the pinky, the little finger, on nine on the sixth string. And it's the same notes but it's a lot more comfortable and it has many practical applications um, especially if you're barring uh, your chords and you want to create a voice leading sound instead of just okay, the, the punk rock sound okay the moving the moving um, shape sound um, if you want to diversify your sound, then, for example, if you play this, okay, um, D minor, okay, C, and B flat, you can play it like this, okay, it's a lot easier, okay, you just lift the fingers off of D minor, you leave the bar on three, and you just put the finger, the little finger, on eight on the sixth string, so you have... Okay, and then you take this back, down. And it's just two fingers instead of double barring. You're barring and just adding your finger um, in its natural position without stretching, without having to, uh, you know, manipulate anything. It's just a very, very convenient chord shape. And for example, if you're playing um, a C shape and you want to go, um, again, to... Okay? You're playing F, okay, bar on five C shape. And then you want to play C. You can do this. You can do this, okay? Or, okay, just put the pinky again on eight on the sixth string and leave the bar where it is on five. So, okay, 
And it's not only for finger style because yeah, you can lift your finger right here and mute the E string. And the little finger, the pinky, can mute the A string. And then, again, you get exactly the same note. Yeah, exactly the same as the A shape bar. So this is the one chord shape that is seldom used and it's just too bad because it's even impressive looking, okay? Because, hey, what's this guy doing? Okay, I've never seen, yeah, I'm hearing a major chord, but why is he putting it on like this? He must be a terrific guitar player. I must follow him or her everywhere. Okay, and it's just one, Okay, one chord shape. Okay, and it's the same idea. Okay, but in my opinion, it's a lot more convenient. So here it is, a life-changing chord, um, which will make your wrists and tendons thank you in the long run. So um, I thank you for watching this lesson. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, what are you waiting for? There's a ton of lessons waiting for you, and it's all for free. But, however, if you want to give something back anyway, there is a Patreon link in the description. Or, if you go to the Lick and Riff website, there is a donation button. You can donate via PayPal. Um, and I thank you in advance for your generosity. So, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now. Enjoy.